What is the best corrupted weapon in Remnant 2? These are variations of weapons already in the game that you can corrupt at the vendor dwell. Get corrupted shards from random aberrations out in the various areas of the game, and you can get a very similar yet different version of certain weapons. And with all the farming required to get these, it could be important to know which one you should go for first. Let's go ahead and rank every corrupted weapon in Remnant 2 from worst to best. Starting out at number 10, we have the Corrupted Cube Gun. This is not only the worst corrupted weapon, but also the worst weapon in the entire game. It's got no place on any build and does not provide anything to combat that matters whatsoever. So this gun fires large cubes as bullets, and what's cool is that it has infinite ammo, letting you have a reliable option in longer fights. However, it also overheats, and it does so faster than any of the other overheat weapons that we have. Basically, in the first three seconds of firing it, it's going to overheat, requiring a very long reload animation that stops all of your actions. You can get around this by wearing the micro compressor ring or using the ingenuity mutator on it, making it overheat hardly at all. But then you deal almost no damage with it. On top of that, the projectiles don't seem to be working correctly at the moment, and at least half of them deal zero damage. Seems to be when two cubes hit the same target at the same time. Obviously, it's a major issue that hurts it quite a bit. Then there's the mod. You're going to conjure a large cube around yourself that is affected by amplitude, and it greatly reduces heat generation and generates missing reserve of ammo, which is kind of cool. It lasts a good amount of time, but is completely worthless. All of the overheat weapons you could use this with, that being only two of them, don't have any overheat issues. On the bone saw, you simply throw on the micro compressor ring, and for the plasma cutter, its own mod fixes the overheat. So you're only using this mod to help the corrupted cube gun, and since it already has infinite ammo, it doesn't even benefit from half of its own buff. This is a terrible item and by far the worst to ever be added into the game, mainly because the benefit that it brings to the table is not usable or wanted by anyone playing Remnant 2. And the cube gun is far better in every regard, being able to block all projectiles with its mod. Worst weapon in the game in an easy F tier. In fact, I'd put it even lower if we had a lower tier. The Corrupted Ophelion is really not all that different from a regular Ophelion. Instead of shooting out one massive line, it shoots out three smaller ones, and the mod shoots five orbs instead of one. The item's definitely better than its brother version, being a bit more fun to use and having far better mod regen. You really don't want to be using this for range damage because it doesn't have much ammo and is just worse than most of the other range options we have. Instead, you're going to use it for a mod build. Throwing on the feedback mutator, it's going to completely regen its own mod every single time time you shoot out the orbs. Make sure to hit the orbs with the gun projectile and they deal even more damage. Infinite mod energy with high explosion damage. And overall, it's just bad. Mainly because every other explosive option we have, which keep in mind there are many, they're all way better, and easier to use for that matter. This requires that you shoot the orbs after sending them out, and with its low magazine, you need to reload way too often. It does have the benefit of pushing back or moving enemies, even some bosses on impact, but still not all that useful. And they even reduced this gun's overall stats compared to the original for no reason, really. Not bad by any means, but when compared, it's basically worthless. D tier. Corrupted Merciless is actually a very powerful gun. You get some massive weak spot damage out of this, and it could shoot quickly as well. The main fire mode on this shoots three times like a sniper. Kinda sucks that way, but the mod sort of modifies it to make it way better. Once activated, the mod has a 13 second duration. During this time, the weapon has unlimited reserve ammo, better reload speed, and the shots apply bleed. And if you hit all three shots in a row on weak spots, it will automatically reload itself meaning you fire infinitely for really, really large damage. Well, here's the problem. This forces you into one single build for the gun where you wear the abrasive whetstone necklace and crit with weak spot rings. Plus, it now only works against bosses with easy to hit weak spots. So Ravager and Annihilation seem pretty good, but even then, if you miss one single shot, it ruins the entire point of the gun and still has to reload. Amazing when it works, but missing a single weak spot is far too easy, and even still, you get more range damage from many other options. Also, the regular Merciless is an incredible gun that's both easy to use and a great bleed applicator. Unless you really want to try out the free reload, it's not worth getting most of the time. I think Battery as the Mutator is really good in this, since that's really all I use it with, but Bullet Weaver could be nice too. D tier. 
Corrupted Nebula is a complete monster. You can deal so much damage in a short amount of time that it trashes bosses way faster than it should, but it really is not that great in the long run. So this gun gets 15 bullets, they each need shot out individually. No more automatic fire like the original gun. Pretty low range damage all things considered, and hitting the target over and over gets old quick. The big benefit here is the mod. If you hit weak spots or get kills, a nanobot is going to be created. This nanobot attacks the enemy for a while. Then, you use the mod to explode any of the bosses you've created with a very, very large detonation. With the feedback mutator equipped, it can be activated three to four times in quick succession, exploding for thousands of damage each time, making it the most powerful corrupted weapon we have in theory. But, here we run into two large issues. Number one, it only works on weak spots, which takes out a very large portion of the bosses, and even some of the ones that have weak spots hide it often. Number two, it requires a decent chunk of time to hit the explosion three total times. I tried this against the Ravager, and even with his massive weak spot, I could only detonate the thing one time, since he's so aggressive. And by the time you dodge, the nanos are gone, so you need to reshoot and detonate all over again. It's a very strong boss deletion gun, but for it only working on elites, aberrations, and bosses, it requires some effort to use. And in the end, I prefer the original Nebula as it's one of the best sidearms in the game with a very strong and always reliable mod. C tier. Corrupted Arbalist is one of my favorite additions to the game. Now, the regular Arbalist got its tracking improved when this gun dropped, making both way better than they could have been before. And while both are great for explosion builds, they have several differences that mean quite a bit. This version gets 8 total bullets per magazine, while the original only got 1. And if we use the Bandit Mutator, you hardly ever have to reload it at all. The regular fire is not all that amazing, although since it bounces between targets several times, you can get really quick mod regen from it. The mod here is the highlight, as once activated, all of your shots explode. This lasts 15 seconds and also grants faster fire rate with less recoil and sway. With some crit and mod damage on your build, it will deal really solid damage. We do already have really good explosive options in Remnant 2, so why would you choose this over something else? Well, actually, its ease of use is really really high. It can be shot at bosses and bounce all the way to other enemies in the fight, letting you clear out extra mechanics in the arena without stopping the damage on your main target. It can be invaluable in dungeons, bouncing around corners and exploding things you didn't even know were there. By no means the best blower upper that we have, but an excellent pairing for other options that don't really deal with adds all that well. And like I said, with the bandit mutator it has so much ammo that there really is a lot of fun to be had here. B tier. The Corrupted Rune Pistol is one of the few must-haves as far as corrupted weapons go. Not only does it deal exceptional weak spot damage when you need to shoot it, but the mod is probably the most versatile in the game. Upon use, you're going to deal 10% more damage to all targets near you. You manage to defeat one of these targets and they drop a brand that grants you 10% more weak spot damage once collected. You can use this on any build in the game to get a simple 10% damage buff, and on ranged builds this turns into a 20% buff a lot of the time. Considering the original Rune Pistol is basically worthless, this is a very good weapon. I really enjoy shooting enemies with it considering it comes with a decent sized magazine, sounds great on hits, and takes enemies down easily. Bullet Weaver is always a very solid mutator on this one, but Fetid Wounds is also nice if you want two damage buffs from one gun. A tier. Corrupted Deceit is now better than the original Deceit. Before, this was not the case, as regular Deceit could loop its mod back so you would always hit weak spot every time you shot the gun. Well, they indirectly nerfed this gun with the latest patch, so now it takes a full magazine to regen its mod. This was a terrible change that I doubt was intentional, as it now makes Deceit worthless, and you should just go for its more powerful gun version instead, that being Corrupted Deceit. Because Corrupted Deceit, on the other hand, can actually loop its mod energy due to it having less mod requirement. The gun works the exact same way, but the mod is slightly different. Using the mod will send out spinning swords. Use the mod again to stop them mid-air. Enemies hit by these will take only weak spot damage. Pull the swords back soon enough and this is enough time to get weak spot hits in that deal insane damage and then regen the mod so you can do this over and over. What I really hate about this is the mod is very inconsistent and actually kind of sucks. You need to activate the mod three total times in order to get the most effect, which takes longer than it should. The mod is very easy to mess up as it might travel just too far or just too short, and sometimes it simply doesn't work at all. For bosses that move constantly like Annihilation, you're not going to get in reliable damage. For Talrotha, who never moves and is Deceit's best boss, it's going to crush him. 
but I'm telling you, three fights with this, and you could see it's unironically a double-edged sword. Original Deceit should have its mod requirement reduced so that both have a fighting chance. As it is right now, they heavily nerfed the original version and made Corrupted Deceit the go-to every time. And for those of you who hate the mod like I do, it's quite unfortunate. Still a very strong option though, since Guarantee Weak Spot is too good to pass up. A tier. Corrupt and Meridian is the best explosion mod based gun that we have in Remnant 2. The regular fire is never really used even though it is still quite good. The mod has two charges that once sent out detonate into a cluster of small explosions, allowing you to have very high crit potential that will make this game almost too easy. Run Helix as your other gun with Harmonizer and then with feedback on this gun you have infinite mod energy in both which takes everything out quickly. It's a direct upgrade from Meridian which really isn't all that good anymore because this version is miles better. On boss Bosses like the One True King where you deal damage to two objects at the same time, it turns into a zero effort battle. And with one of the most satisfying sounds in the game upon hit, you're never going to have more fun than you will with this weapon. A must have that works with Nightweaver's Grudge and Atonement Fold for much more crit or can be paired with the detonation trigger to blast away. Just be sure to equip a Burden of the Gambler and you're all set. S tier. Corrupted Savior is by far one of the best guns in the game. Being nearly the exact same savior that was in Remnant from the Ashes, it is not only really strong, but very fun to use. The main fire mode on it shoots kinda like a minigun. Bullets fly out quickly and can deal excellent crit damage. The mod is a laser beam. Charging from 1 to 5 stacks, it does the most damage when this is full. Honestly, the beam is a bit absurd and could deal thousands of damage if you hit both crit and weak spot. And the cool interaction here is that the mod affects the fire rate. When at full stack, it shoots really fast, and then once you use the mod, it shoots very slowly, ramping up as it recharges, meaning that you're going to use it on pretty much two different builds, a ranged crit build where you never use the mod, or on a mod spam build where you only use the mod. Both can be quite effective, but the range damage is the more consistent of the two. Throw on the momentum mutator and it melts the game easily. When correctly set up, it can have very fast reload as well, which makes it fluid in any combat scenario. Great to have this savior version back from the good old days, and it's far better than the savior in this game, making it well worth the switch. S tier. And now for the single best corrupted weapon in Remnant 2, that being Corrupted Sorrow. I was on the fence about this one, but man, it is by far the best once you figure out how to use it. Honestly, it isn't all that different from regular Sorrow. So you get the same gun that's much more powerful. This fires very slow bolts into your enemy that stick there. At a max of 10 bolts, you can then use its mod to send out an orb for each of the bolts that tracks to the enemy. Right off the bat, this does really strong damage if you set it up for crit. With guaranteed crit, you just melt bosses and can use this effectively in dungeons as well. But the interesting thing is, these orbs can not only crit, but for some reason weak spot. So instead of running Burden of the Gambler, you throw on Xania's Malice and have an instant free win button. The orbs themselves have to hit the weak spot, obviously making this not possible a lot of the time. Simply aiming a little up before you hit the mod allows it to track much better, and with the near instant mod regen, you activate it after every 10 bolts that you shoot out. Never need to fire your other gun, never need to do anything special at all. Just shoot, use mod, shoot, use mod, and completely rinse the game. I like to use Momentum as the mutator as you're dealing high ranged and weak spot damage, but Bowl Weaver could be great too. The one downside is that this gun truly does shoot very slowly, but when you have tracking damage that deals thousands per hit, that doesn't really matter at all. These orbs actually can heal allies for 10% of max health if you shoot your teammates instead, which is fun and a unique interaction, although not why this gun is good. Either way, this is an absolutely disgusting weapon right now, and once you get used to its playstyle, you'll be astonished at how fast bosses go down. S tier. And there you have all corrupted weapons in Remnant 2 ranked from worst to best. Each is at least fun to use, all except the corrupted cube gun, which just has no place in the game. I do imagine it's going to get fixed here soon, so that at least it'll be usable, but unless they change that mod, you should just ignore it altogether. Nice to have some fun variations of other weapons that give you more ways to mess around with builds. Maybe someday we'll see some corrupted melee weapons, but for now, these are going to do nicely. Thanks everyone for watching. And I'll catch you next time.